first of all, he's hurt now, but no, I mean, um, you know, <laughs> this team up the middle right now has gone from being extremely deep to extremely weak. Um, trust me, Bruce is not a, is not loving, uh, Victor Rask. Um, and I don't think it's a direction from Fenton, but, but, um, you know, they, a lot of it was the other night. I mean, they're without Cunning. And so Eck, you need, you think that you're going to want a checking line center going up against that top line the other night. And this is two games in a row where Eck didn't get it done. And last game was a little unfortunate because he was hurt pretty much all, all, uh, you know, game long, you got hurt on the second shift and played through it. But in Florida, Eck was just terrible. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, he's, he's a young player that's going to have to have to, uh, continue to mature. I think he will. Um, but I, I don't think that Erickson X any more than a third line center on a, on a, uh, if you're a fully stocked team, I think that he's could be a great third line center. But he's not somebody that, that to me, uh, on an everyday basis, can be playing top six minutes by any stretch. I don't think he's got the offense to do it. Um, but uh, on the, the other night, it was a little, to me, surprising just because Victor Rass was coming back for the first time. But I think that Bruce wanted to put him in a position to succeed. It obviously didn't work. He's coming back for the first time in a month. Uh, we'll see the way that I got to feel bad for Greenway tonight, having to play with Rask and Aberg, but maybe Greenway could help uh, carry those guys along. And now all of a sudden you do have a couple of quality, maybe top six lines. It'll be interesting to see Stahl and Parisi. It hasn't worked in their entire run together in Minnesota. They just don't play well together. I don't think they even have a point together in the last like 25 games that they've played. It's something crazy numbers like that. So we'll see, uh, we'll see uh, what Parisi and Stahl look like together tonight. From Zach Spicer, the Zucker story today was heartwarming. He's talking about your piece in The Athletic. I'm assuming this is a no, but do published stories like that affect a GM's thought process in exploring trades on either side? Example, could a rival GM in need of a high-character guy be more apt to pursue him, or would that make it harder for Fenton to let him go? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I think that's the hope for, for, for Jason is that it allows him to stay. I will say, if you're a GM reading that story from another team, you might think he has high character but you also worry about whether or not you know the the dynamic which was the first time that Carly talked about it on the record on the fact that she will not be able to leave here if he is uh, ever traded because of their family situation um, you know that that could keep you as another GM a little concerned about acquiring him because you're always going to have kind of a homesick uh, a player on your hands who's always separated from his family for for the rest of really time here. So, and if you don't read that story and don't know what I'm talking about, read the Athletic today and you'll understand what I'm what I mean. But basically, if Jason Zucker is ever traded, uh, Carly Zucker is staying in Minnesota for family reasons, and so um, you know it puts uh, puts him in a situation. But yes, I mean I do think that Eric Stahl is a perfect example. There were a lot of teams that were interested in Aristotle at the end it was pretty much only the Boston Bruins um, of, of the teams that weren't on his no trade list the Boston Bruins were the one team after him and I think a lot of it was because he went so public about wanting to stay here that people if you're a playoff team didn't want somebody that maybe uh, wasn't going to be fully invested down the stretch two more questions from Kyler Vasperet I still haven't shaken uh, off what Craig said Craig Lebel said in that video about making noise this offseason there are no big time unrestricted free agents to go after so that leaves offer sheets and trades do you know what they're up to yet i mean i, I think it'll be trades but it, again it concerns me that they gave away three tradable assets in need writer coil and granland um i don't think he's going to do offer sheets uh you know may, maybe a t- guy like casper uh, casper Kapanen is somebody in toronto that is um is uh, that is vulnerable to one um, but you also need that player to be willing to sign one here. And I just don't see the wild uh, for a team that's trying to build up its prospect pool. That's going to be willing to just blow a hole through their draft picks um, to, to go sign an offer sheet elsewhere. So um, I would agree with you. I think that you got to be careful uh, in the UFA market. I don't, there's not a lot there that I would ever uh, go and overspend for. And to me, that one problem that this team continues to get into is that they go and overspend for, for free agents that are in their, you know, late twenties and give them long-term deals to the point that they're, you know, ineffective by the time they get into their young thirties or mid thirties. Last question. This will serve as Michael's last thought next week. We'll be doing an in-person show, maybe from Michael's new mansion, which will be interesting. I think he has a, a, an audio room set up for us just for this podcast. Uh, I can't wait to tell people about it. Uh, let's go to Bob Stone. First, let's thank fightsquad.com. Promo code is talk north for your first delivery free. 
Uh, thanks to Twilney Dining Galleria, Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent, Champlin, and Fixology Repair, FixologyRepair.com, third floor of the Mall of America in downtown in the Skyway from Bob Stone. What is more likely to happen tonight? We're talking here on Thursday afternoon. A Minnesota Wild power play goal for a Ben Bishop third shutout. <laughs> well, fourth shutout. He's got three in a row. So, um... I think the Wild will get to him tonight. The Wild, I saw somebody on Twitter say to me, like, if, if the Wild don't trounce him tonight, that's an area of concern. I mean, honestly, that's insane. The Wild need to try to win this game 2-1, 3-1. That's the way they're going to beat the Dallas Stars in a game like this. The Wild do not have firepower to go into a game looking to score four or five goals on a goalie that is never that that is in such a zone. They've got to play a simple type of brand of hockey because if they try to get into a track meet with this team, with Radulov, Ben, and Sagan playing as well as they do, as, as they are, it's, it's not going to be pretty. Um, this team's on fire. This is the way this team is going to have to be successful the, the rest of the way. Play games like they played against Tampa, structurally in all three zones, and that's the way that they'll be, vict- uh, be victorious here down the stretch. Uh, thanks to Michael, as always. Uh, by the way, I highly recommend coming down to Florida this time of the year. It is spectacular. I know Michael got to be down here earlier. Yes, we are lucky. Yes, we live privileged lives to get out of out of the winter. I recommend it to anybody who can afford to get down here. Uh, so we'll talk to you from Michael's Palatial Estate next week. And uh, this is the first of a bunch of shows we're putting out this weekend across the Talk North platform. So check out TalkNorth.com. Subscribe at iTunes or your favorite podcast app. And let's keep this rolling. Thanks to everybody. Yep. Jim, I just want to real quick tell you that I expect a housewarming gift from both you and Russo Slacks. Ooh, uh, you know what? I'll just have Russo Slacks Photoshop a a fake uh, housewarming gift. I think that's the way we operate in this world. Yeah, wonderful. Pretty little city built on a hillside Music in the bars and fire in the sky To the beach and it was covered in ice And I used to call it home So much coming out, there's nothing going in I know that you feel like you're never gonna win All but the world